created and it then basically tells you that your account is new and your, your balance is basically zero. Some of the things that you can do after you have created an account is uh, balance, balance inquiry uh, to, to check how much money is in, your, is in your wallet which has been created if you have received the confirmation. You just basically type the, 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 the words or type BAL or balance uh, and the system will be able to tell you how much money, how much money you have in your, in your account. Um, again, another thing that you are able to do, uh, the ability to be able to pay merchants. Um, at the moment, uh, you would find that um, the, the, the solutions out there that are being offered by the banks, although they, they, they do have mobile wallets, they really do not allow you to do or perform transactions on them. Unless if any other bank offers that and I don't know about it. No one? So basically what you what you can do is you can uh, okay I'll use the, the example of uh, Standard Bank. If it be you want it that service you can send someone you want it but after that then what? You can directly pay. Besides what else can you buy? Besides that, what else can you do? No, 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 no. You cannot transact in that account. Yeah, it's said, it said buying electricity and air in a time. So can you go and pick and pay and then pay using that money you wanted? In with any other bank? Any bank. They don't allow you to do that. Why? I don't know. But then why would that later? <laughs> it's okay, it's all good. Somebody will answer that question, hopefully. Yep. Somebody will be able to answer that question for us. But our thinking was if you have a mobile wallet that is with funds in it, what stops somebody from using that account to be able to, to do transactions on a daily basis? Shabin, Katutura, there you want to pay for your beer with your. Why, 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 why should you not be able to do something like that? So, how? Sorry? I think identity. What are you? <laughs> that, that's, that's not a strong enough excuse. That's not an excuse. No, no. To me, it's an excuse. To me, it's an excuse. Do you know why? Because if they really wanted to know the identity of the people, they, they could do that. Yeah? They could do that, but they don't. Because there's no motivation to implement something like this. For whatever reason, I don't know. Because if, if a regulation is put in place to say, guys, if we need to know your clients to be able to transact using my, I, I, I do not refuse to, to tell them who I am for me to be able to use my e-wallet account in what? In pick and pay. But has anybody ever tried to do that? I don't know. But as I said, anyway, one of the things that you are able to do within, um, within the system is to actually pay merchants. These merchants can be, can basically be any business. Uh, you will try that for the purposes of the hackathon. It was basically a taxi that you would pay um, money and then they would receive the confirmation of the permit. But this merchant can be anything. It can be a store, it can be anything really. Any person who would want to receive funds from people. All they just do is to sign up as <coughs> a merchant within the system. They are recognized, they are given a merchant code, and that's the merchant code that they basically give to their clients when they are making their payments. So as an example, to be able to pay a merchant, there is a merchant in the system with the code C78. Um, so how, how, how you pay in our current SMS, uh, you know, SMS system, just basically type uh, pay C78, which is the merchant that you're paying, and after that, the amount. Um, most likely, for those that have just created their accounts now, there is no money in your account. It's a, it's a zero account because you have not basically put funds in it, which is the next thing that we would probably want to do. For those that were brave enough, was there somebody who's brave enough to actually create an account? Yeah. Okay. Are you willing to shout out your number so that I can send you money? Okay. Okay. So what I'm just basically going to do is to say, um, you will see once, once, once I type there. Send. Yes. Your number is. Mm -hmm. Four seven one. Four seven one zero one four two zero one four two. How much money do you want? Just I I I I own the system, so I can, I can pay. I can give you the money. Okay, so what I've just basically done is I've sent I've sent an SMS uh, saying. Um, send his number and the money and basically he should be receiving confirmation on his phone saying that uh, the, 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 uh, the fund has been transferred i also received a confirmation your payment has been successfully sent this is your current balance he has also received an sms confirming the amount that i've sent you 
Now you can then pay a merchant and you can also then pay somebody else. Is that it? Anyone else who would want me to send money as well? Okay. Please send me money. Maybe to be a US dollar. Powerful like. <laughs> we'll come to that. Okay, we also have it. I need ten thousand dollars. I only like what? I've only two thousand nine hundred sent in my account. Less than that. Anyone else who registered the account? Point one. Four five six. Zero. Two three eight. How much? Just 200. <laughs> this thing requires me to. Let me just click send there. Okay, I've just, I've just basically sent you 200. Yeah, so the real thing is successful. You should be receiving a confirmation that you have received your money. So, in terms of sending money to your colleagues or paying paying merchants, that's this is, that's that's all that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. However, as I said, this is just one way that we did because of the hackathon, the time constraints of the hackathon. But the idea is, this is a service. This is basically a service, and on top of this service, you've got all of these functions that happen on top of the service. So, this service can be used, for example, if we were to build a mobile app. Uh, if we were to build a website, if we were to build even a desktop app, whatever it is, we can build that because it's, they are just basically using the functionality of the, of the service to be able to do the exact same things that we are doing via service here. <laughs> this was just to show the proof of, proof of concept, to show that it's something that can be done. Mm -hmm. Ah, then you have to call customer care, eh? <laughs> call customer care and see why your money. But my, it was taken from my account, you can see the message here. So customer care now will deal with your team. Um, with regard to merchants, so will they yes. have to contact you to be able to be paid? Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, generally, how it works with merchants is that once I once you are created as a merchant within the system, we, we have an agreement of some sort, you know, between the owner of the system and yourself as a merchant. Then on a on a time basis that we agree upon as you and and, and, and us, we then basically agree to say after every one day, twenty four hours, we transfer your money to your account, or after every one week or one month, we transfer those funds to your account so that have been paid into your account that you really would want to enjoy. That's the idea, as I said. <coughs> okay, the other things that you can uh, that you can do, yeah, pay send, you know, create the account and so on and so on. So in, 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 in essence, before I come, uh, I come to you, this, that's the idea, that's the thinking. Um, mobile wallets should be able to do more than what they currently do. And if you manage to do this in, in, in less than a day during a hackathon, what would happen if this thing is opened up and uh, those people are given the opportunity to be able to actually develop something like this and make it, and make it more usable? What can happen? Maybe an MPESA. Exactly. You know, or even more. The possibilities are there. As I said, this was done within a day. Give us six months or so and think of the magic that will happen and the opportunity to be able to create that magic. But in essence, uh, that's it. That's all. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Leslie, you had your hand up? It's okay. Okay. <laughs> any, maybe any other quiz maybe before we before I sign out? Um, <laughs> how would one deposit money into the account? <coughs> deposit? Yeah, in your personal account. Okay. Uh, when when we did this, the idea was that there would be agents that can do the depositing of money for you. These agents can either be standalone agents or the merchants themselves can allow you to uh, put money into your account. By going to a merchant, you give them your cash, they just add it into your account, it into your account. Or doing it the normal way that other guys would do it, like you have your deposit going into a specific account which you have and that money is credited into your, it's credited into your account. So there are multiple ways of getting the money. So I still have to physically go somewhere to put it in. If you don't have anyone to send you money, yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. No. There are some things that you cannot run away from. Yeah. There are some things that you cannot run away from because the system needs money in it to be able to work. And it's not money that we are creating like we are doing now. Here, whether it's. <laughs> but when you are working with real money now, we really have to be working with existing money already which then needs to somehow get into our system and manage from there and then be able to take it out and in of the system. So those parts still need to be done. So how different is it apart um, the thinking, how different is it from Apple Pay? Uh, in theory, they, they shouldn't be any different. 
in theory, this is exactly what, what it does as well. It allows people to be able to pay, it allows people to be able to receive their money. In essence, yeah? Because Apple Play, Apple Pay is actually kind of struggling. Is the point being? The, the fact that, um, what is this? It doesn't necessarily beat the traditional way of paying. Let's say if you just swipe quickly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see? The, the time frame is marginally the same. Okay. But you see, the idea is not to beat the banks. The mm. idea is not to beat them. You can never beat the banks. Uh, some people just think this banking is, you know, nothing but you know, organized crime by people in uh, in corners. But you, you you will not be able to beat them. But what we are basically saying here is more can be done. And if the banks are not willing to, to, to do it, why not open it up to people to be able to have these ideas and make them work with the banking systems? Was it I said we, we can't run away from the banks? Yeah. One way or the other, you have to come into them because they have the system in place already. Right. I don't want to be competing with them, but complementing what they have to do. Okay. Yeah. 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 What are you going to do next with the proof of concept? I don't know. Maybe after I get the next few speakers to, to speak about the, about the environment here in Namibia, about payments, maybe if I listen, I might be able to provide an answer. Of, answer of that. I really would want to know what from the regular side what is that they're thinking about about you know payment side is okay. So then only then will I be able to provide the information. Yeah, I don't know what question. Ah, pardon me, but I'll leave it there. I don't understand. <laughs> okay. I want to know um do you have you guys develop controls in place to stop money laundering? Someone sends the money, so let's say it originates from myself. I get the money from my bank account, I put 50,000 and I send it to a lot of guys. How do you eventually trace who actually, where that fund is actually ending up? Because if it's just going to be on the cell phone, uh, the problem with cell phones is that I can just go buy a SIM card. I put it on my phone, psh, get the money, get it, and if there's a withdrawal means that take the cash and then there's actually no way that Namfisa or Bank of Namibia will actually trace where those funds go. So is there, is there maybe something that you guys are developing to see like how you can actually make sure that people that are signed up to it actually have to give their identification or something like that? But uh, giving the identification, is it guaranteed that there will be no money laundering? No, no, definitely not. But it's not right? Yeah, definitely not. So we will we'll still be faced with the same problem that the banks here. Yeah. And that, but in terms of uh, in terms of mechanisms to be able to identify that, that's very easy to do. Mm. When when you put money into the system and it's going out, the system is the, is recording each and every transaction that's going on. Yeah. The system can automatically flag accounts mm -hmm. that are deemed to be doing so many transactions per day. Then there's also the issue of daily limits that will be placed on each and every account in terms of the number of amount of money that you can put out per day. Those things we, we discussed them. We, we spoke about them during the aircraft and that is. Yeah. But we, we really didn't implement that. Yeah. Okay. And but also, it's something that we discussed. Yeah. And Bithian, just one more thing. Um, because of the success of mobile payment, what um, providers are doing now, they are registering the SIM card of every. Yeah. So that you just can't go anymore <coughs> and buy a SIM card. Yes. This is one control mechanism uh, from the provider side, making sure that. Your SIM card, your number is only accessible to you and only you. And it will even take 20 years for it. You know, once we free it up, it goes in a free pool. It takes 20 years for somebody to reclaim it again. So that's a new law that we, that we regulators are now going to implement. So you said it takes 20 years for me to reclaim it? Um, no, not for somebody, for, else. for somebody else to reclaim the number. Yeah, just to and, make sure. He's basically talking about registering the same cards. Yeah. At, at the moment, it's not a requirement yeah. here in Namibia. Exactly. But you'll find that in some countries, yeah. when you actually buy a SIM card, you need to register. Exactly. And that's what I'm, saying, I'm assuming this is going to be a Namibian product. Yes. I mean, what is the Namibian regulations now? And right now, getting a SIM card is. It's, 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 I'm just saying, I'm just giving advice that I think if it's going to really go big, I think it's something that you guys would have to consider. But I think that's the first thing that the central bank and the peace would say is that how do you prevent? Because, I mean, you know, as you know, the banks are very, very hard on that AML, anti money laundering. So I think this is one thing you can consider. As I said, we discussed it, but there was nothing that seemed to do to actually show. Remember, when you're doing the to show as much as possible what you do in that period of time. Anything else that's very difficult to show is that it's doing it.
I never, I never bought this card. I think I have a business card. Five point one one. Four one. Double nine. Double eight. Double two three. Eight one. But I guess in the absence, uh, okay. Sorry, just one question. I can not to like uh -huh. find out. Um, your service is only available through SMS and anyone. Nothing else. At the moment, as I said, for the proof of concept, only via SMS. Okay. We did not have enough time to create a mobile app or a mobile or a website or a web app. Yes, yes. But as I said, the structure of this is that it runs for services. So it's just a matter of creating an interface, be it mobile or any other interface, that then this can connect with the same interface that this SMS system is connecting to. So, so this could be mobile could be more. Yes, there could be more. Like as I said, mobile uh, mobile app. You can develop a mobile app that does exactly all of these things. A nice interface. You can also use USSD, for example, whereby you can actually ask for a PIN and so on and so on. Uh, you know, put in authentication and all those things there. So all of that is possible because we're saying it's just running on top of the same API or you know web service that this is running on. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you people for sketching the environment and what is needed in the environment. Now we want to move on. You know what is the, what are the requirements in Namibia? What are the legal requirements in Namibia to be able to implement a system like that? Uh, what is the chances of this system? Because the possibilities are, are massive. For example, if I go to town and I want to park my car in a parking bay, if I can pay that parking bay for my cell phone to the city of Bantu, and that officer comes to my car and can see via cell phone that this parking bay is paid already. It expires within 15 minutes. The system can then transfer the money to the city of Bantu. So the possibilities are massive, but the question now is, is this a legal system? <laughs> can, can we call him Mr. Chilongo? from the Bank of Namibia, the regulator of banks in this country. Thank you very much mm -hmm. uh, for the opportunity. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Enoch Shilongo. I, I work at the Bank of Namibia uh, in the Payment and Settlement Systems Department as an analyst responsible for policy formulation, uh, licensing of applications, and research in the payment space. Um, I'm joined here by my uh, director of payments, Ms. Mm -hmm. Barbara Dreiro Moregi. Mm -hmm. She's sitting oh. right over there. Yes, so, any high level questions? <laughs> any questions? We turn around and face it. <laughs> Okay. Um, first, first thing, just apologies for the date. It's probably when I did the, the did the presentation, so you can see how eager I was to be here. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm just gonna <laughs> go through uh, the legal framework in Namibia uh, in terms of uh, payments, uh, uh, instruments, uh, e-commerce uh, capabilities, and and the likes, like uh, what Mr. So beaten, beaten, yeah. beaten is, is, is um, presented now. Yes, it does fall within our in in, in, in our space. Uh, there are regulations for that. There are requirements uh, around setting up such um, uh, services or payment services. So perhaps or during my, my my presentation, I'll probably touch on a few things that one requires to set up such wallets uh, and beyond as well. Okay, so my presentation has the following agenda. It looks bulky, yeah. but I'll run through it. So I'm going to go through um, really what e-commerce is, which I'm sure most of you know what it is. The, 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 the examples of, 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 of e-commerce that are out there currently in Namibia. Um, <coughs> card not present in e-commerce. Uh, I'm going to go through the best practices of, 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 of doing card not present transactions. 
um, we're going to talk about access to e-commerce, the role of the bank, our department, which is the Payment and Settlement Systems Department, the role of the Payments Association of Namibia, which is also which worked very close with us, and then the licensing procedures that we have um, in place, and obviously the way forward in terms of uh, innovation for for you guys. Okay, so. <coughs> Really, when we talk about e-commerce, we just talk about the buying and selling of products or services on the internet or any other electronic platform that you might have. Okay, so uh, we know in recent years there has been the introduction of also what we call uh, M-commerce, which I think someone asked today as well, which is basically just the same thing, the buying and selling of products, but on a mobile platform, which should probably fall in the space of what Mr. Beaton is, uh, is, is trying to do. Uh, and then we have different types of, 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 of e-commerce or the bank recognized says this type of e-commerce not limited to this per se I'm sure if you google you find so many things uh, when it comes to types of e-commerce but business to business when you facilitate uh, the buying and selling of, 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 of products uh, between businesses then we talk about uh, B2B commerce business to customer is your normal when a business buy, uh, sells an iPad or a phone to you that's your normal uh, business to customer commerce, well, obviously online or any other electronic system. Then we have what we call customer to business. This is where now you have probably a group of customers uh, selling something back to a business. Okay, um, an example would probably be, let's say you, you guys, there's maybe pick and pay that requested for vegetables and Maybe five of you have uh, vegetable farms and you come together and you, you give that product over to Pig and Bay. So that's sort of this uh, uh, customer to business. And then obviously Pig and Bay would have put it somewhere online and say I want this and then the payment and everything happens there and obviously a truck has to come from you guys' warehouses or farms and deliver the, the vegetables to, to uh, Pig and Bay, which in any case you as a farmer or anyone else can go back again and buy. So it's the customer supplying a business and still labeled as a customer. And then we have customer to customer e-commerce, which is basically what we do on eBay, um, where you buy from each other. Okay, where you can sell your second hand iPhone and, you know, and another person comes and buy that phone. So there was an e-commerce platform set up for customers to transact or to uh, buy and sell from each other. So that's basically e-commerce. So this is just a, a flow of what happens in an e-commerce uh, transaction or a, an e-commerce environment. So you as a client, or so you as a, as, a, as, as a buyer, you go on your laptop or MacBook. Some people don't like MacBooks being referred to as laptops. <laughs> so you go on your, on, on your MacBook, um, and then you do a card not present transaction, okay? So that means that you do not use your physical card to, to perform the transaction. You use your, the card number, the CVV number, and then you, you uh, say purchase shoes. Okay, so that transaction obviously had to, has to hit the, 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 the commercial bank, your commercial bank. Uh, so there's banking involved basically when such a transaction happens. So, um, that transaction is facilitated by, by a bank. The bank confirms if your account has money. So the, the, the two arrows speak. So the bank can confirm, the bank verifies the card that you are using, confirms if your transaction has money, sends the, sends the message back to whatever website that you are using to do the e-commerce transaction. Obviously that, 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 that website will have some sort of service provider behind it that's facilitating that transaction. If everything is okay, uh, whoever is selling the shoes will then go to their warehouse uh, and tell the warehouse manager, we have okay, this transaction is approved, please ship this transaction to the customer. So basically, if you are the customer, then so that this is what we then probably would call the e commerce platform. It's, it can either be now the website where you are doing this, inter this uh, uh, transaction. So that's just an overview of uh, an e-commerce uh, transaction. <laughs> so in Namibia, um, we have Air Namibia as an e-commerce uh, business as well. 
because you can now you, you can buy you can book and and buy uh, e tickets online. So we consider that to be e commerce. And behind here, Ena Media, there are players that allow Ena Media to, to, to do e commerce. And those players can be the bank, can be the service provider. They uh, normally have to go through processes that I'll talk uh, to later. And then you have uh, the Namibian as well, where you can buy uh, newspapers online and probably archives and whatnot. Uh, then you have Rainy's Travel. They also allow you to uh, to book and pay um, uh, for cars. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the rentals. Yes, the rentals and I think the flight as well. So you can also do that online. Then there's a the cardboard box. Also, they do the same thing. Then we have the Today Company uh, with their various uh, products that they offer, be it accommodation, um, uh, they, they also organize events, and you can pay for all their products using your card not present. They have an application as well that you can go on, and then they list all the events or, or, or products or services that they are selling. And then you can do a card of present transaction, uh, which we deem to be e-commerce or m-commerce as well, because they have the, both an application and a website as well for this. And then you have NWR, obviously. Um, what we found is that uh, almost close to 90% of e-commerce in Namibia is in the tourism sector. So one would want to, to actually expand this. Obviously, we, as Bank of Namibia, embrace innovation. Uh, as long as, it's com as, long as it's, uh, well, it complies to uh, the relevant regulations that, that are out there. So, probably an encouragement to, to look at this and just food for thought that 90% of e-commerce is just in the tourism sector. So what can be done in other sectors of uh, the country? Okay. Well, the benefits of e-commerce, obviously when you set up an e-commerce um, platform, like Mr. Britain there, it's 24-7. Um, whoever subscribes to, to your e-commerce platform or, or service has that service uh, on a 24-7 basis. Same thing with you, you can sell uh, anytime. There's an extended reach when you have e-commerce platforms. Um, you are not only limited to the people in, in Namibia per se or in Pendok. Okay, so you can reach out there. I think there was a question where um, directed to Mr. Beaton, how is this different from Apple Pay and, 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 and the likes. So normally what innovators do out there, it's, you, you always want to, 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 to bring up something that <coughs> brings about financial inclusion. So let your product at least reach the masses that are not financially included. We're talking about now the rural areas, you know, USSD is, is, is available to, to everyone with a, with a mobile phone. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to have internet. Like, like, well, I think what he said is his service is USSD uh, enabled. So that, those are the excellent reaches that we're talking about. It can, it can go beyond just people that, can, that, that have mobile data. So you can actually reach a number of people when you are doing um, e-commerce. You probably don't need uh, physical company setups, uh, apart from the warehouses that I just mentioned now, where the goods, the physical goods are coming from. That's now if you are in the business of selling uh, physical goods in the e-commerce space. So obviously when the payment is done on the internet or, or, or any other electronic platform, the physical goods have to be delivered somewhere. And that's probably the only time you need a physical setup, unless you are doing um, customer to customer, where the goods are just coming from my uh, house and then I sell them. Then we also talk of reduced transaction cost. Uh, the cost of, of, of setting up the physical space, the cost of, of paying people to stand in the shops and advertise your, your staff. So many costs can be cut uh, when you do e-commerce because you do not necessarily have to pay so many people. You get one Struct one system probably that's running everything, and then you do everything from there. You don't, it's it's some can say it's, it's less costlier than your normal physical shop. Okay, let's put it that way. And then this um, information symmetry so, both from the seller and the client uh, perspective, 
there's a richness of, of information. So basically, for the seller, you would know what your clients want. And I'm sure there are a lot of IT guys here that are familiar with cookies, e-commerce e -commerce merchants and, 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 and providers normally uh, put cookies on their websites. Yeah. The moment you accept that cookie, it means that whenever that client logs on again or search for something, your website will always be uh, one of the ones that are suggested. It also allows, I think, the merchant to get more information about um, their sellers when you click the number of goods that you want and you probably say you don't want anymore, you come back again, it brings with the same suggestions again. I think it's also, even on eBay it happens, where when you come back, they bring again, if you bought a shirt, they'll bring other shirts again on the side. So those are the, that's the work of cookies. And then obviously also the, the, the buyer, um, you get to, to read the description of what you are buying. Uh, you get to, to Google more and, and, and read up more on whatever this e-commerce machine is selling. Obviously there are disadvantages as well. Uh, stuff like you probably don't know the quality of the good, you can't, you, you can't attest that and all that. But yeah, we, you, you can probably tell yourself that the advantages might really outweigh um, the disadvantages if you do a good job in the e-commerce in the e space. Okay, so what I mean by card not present or what card not present is basically is uh, whenever the card is used over the internet, uh, without it being physically present in the transaction. So you don't need the card itself to do the transaction. If you have your card number, if you have your CVV number at the back, then you are doing a card not present transaction. And the banks actually can tell uh, card not present and card transactions. So they will be able to tell you which card, which transactions were card, were, were CNP and which ones were used when, uh, which, or which, one, which ones are called with a card present. So that's basically what card not present is. And it's mostly used um, in e-commerce type of transactions. That's where you normally use, use card not present, uh, <coughs> where, where you normally use uh, the card not present function. So, but then for you now to do a card not present tra transaction, and for you, an, an e-commerce merchant that wants to accept card not present transactions, there are, there are a number of system or security issues that that are at play that you cannot you will not be able to do to, to, to provide uh, e-commerce capabilities or run an e-commerce uh, uh, merchant type of business if your uh, operations are not secure and the commercial banks in Namibia they they have standards obviously security standards. And one of them is the 3D security, where if it's Visa, then it's verified by Visa. There's only that sign verified by Visa. American Express is safe key. Mastercard is called secure code, and the JCB, the J secure. So normally, when you as a as a as a merchant want want to be uh, an e-commerce merchant, you need to be 3D secure. So basically, 3D secure is when you do a transaction. Okay, obviously uh, there are layers of security, and one of them is probably your PIN. And your, uh, or, or, your, or your CVB number and whatnot. Normally, it comes in the form of a, a, a text, a verification text being sent to your, to, to, to your phone, and then you enter that, that uh, PIN that they send via your phone. So those are all types of 3D security. Um, yes, the OG, the, the one-time PIN. So those are the type of uh, 3D securities that they require. So most of the banks in Namibia will not give you that e-commerce capability if you are not 3D secure from your side. Okay, we'll go into, into further details on what the commercial banks are doing. Then we also have what we call PCI DSS compliance. Now PCI DSS compliance, these are card, uh, 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 card information uh, data standards. So when you issue, uh, when, you, when you are in the business, of e-commerce that, 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 that uh, requires you to take card information or to process card information, you have to be PCI DSS compliant. And PCI, and PCI DSS, uh, they have a set of standards that you need to, um, to, to, to be compliant to.
okay so you need to take them off uh before you can do any card uh, type of transaction or or be involved in any card operations okay that that's from uh not just the the uh, transacting it's from card storage uh anything that has to do with the card it has to be pc that is compliant and normally banks will tell you whatever you want to bring in has to be PAP address is compliant. There are, there are standards there. If you are a service provider, you have to be PAP, PAP address compliant. If you are a merchant that's doing it without a service provider, on your own, you need to ensure that you are also PCI DSS compliant. And most of the e-commerce clients, well, of, of, of the e-commerce examples that I gave you, they are, well, I, I believe that they are PAP, PAP address compliant because the banks will not take them on if they are not PCI address compliant. Okay, I know, Personally, of, of uh, say today, they had to ensure that whoever they are dealing with was PCIDS is compliant. Okay, so those are one of some of the standards that when you are thinking of all these e-commerce uh, capabilities, e-commerce businesses, keep these standards um, <coughs> in mind. Also, keep in mind uh, fraud detection solutions. Those are also some solutions that banks want to see in your model when you come present to them because it's it's highly unlikely for you to do an e-commerce uh, uh, business without having a bank behind. Because normally, it's, these are online transactions, people's cards uh, and information are, uh, uh, are used in these transactions. So banks are always involved and they have a list of uh, standards that they want. <coughs> To be in place. Okay, so this is just normally uh, best practices for card not present transactions. So obviously, I'm sure some of you have done card not present transactions, and they normally ask you these things: uh, the, 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 the account number, uh, the card holder name, as it appears on the card. I'm sure that also stands on the website most of the time. Putting your uh, 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 card holder name as it appears on the card, <coughs> the, the expiration date of of, of, of the card. Uh, you must obtain the billing and shipping address of uh, the user of, 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 of the customer. The CVB number at the back should be um, included as well. The contact information and the details of the order. So those are just when you are doing card present transaction, just to be on the safe side, uh, because <coughs> people are not whoever you are dealing with is not in the physical presence. So you need to uh, ensure that all these things are obtained. Okay, so then <coughs> I talk about access to e-commerce. So like I said, you, you need a commercial bank, okay? Why do you need a commercial bank? Because you need uh, access to client bank account details and just, uh, yeah, so you need access to client bank account and also their details. So and for that, you need a bank uh, when you are doing e-commerce, okay? Normally banks enter into a merchant agreement with the e-commerce uh, merchant, okay, because uh, there's an agreement that you need to sign with them uh, when when transactions are performed, okay, and when transactions are performed on your on your uh, website, okay, they wh whoever is now behind that those transactions that's assisting you, that that service provider, if, if you have a service provider behind you. That service provider is responsible for for talking to to the commercial bank. So they 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 uh, create a link between you and the commercial bank. So sometimes people people either do the e-commerce thing by themselves, where, whereby you are you are the merchant and the service provider, or you get a service provider uh, to assist you with that. I'll talk about that as well. So now when you do it yourself, you probably need a merchant agreement with the commercial bank. So that they can process those, those transactions for you. So what will happen is obviously people will go on your website with from from different banks. Okay, so if, let's say you pay with FNB. Now a guy that that has a, an account with NetBank does a transaction on your on your website, um, Standard Bank on your website, Bangladesh on your website. So now what the bank has to do, the bank has to ensure that. The people that bought things all from your website, their accounts need to be debited. Okay, their accounts need, need to be debited, and you also need to, to, to get that amount 
uh, that people are paying into your account. So now the bank, since the bank uh, participates in clearing and settling, they are the only ones that are uh, uh, able to talk to the other banks and say, okay, your client did a, a, a transaction on my client's website, uh, take money out of that client's account and give it to me so I can credit my client's account. And then, so all those transactions then now have to be uh, cleared and processed. So by clearing is basically just the netting, um, well, the, the taking out of, of one account from another bank and putting it in another bank. So all that, all that is now done at NumClear. So we have NumClear that does the clearing of, of transactions. So that file has then now to be submitted by that commercial bank to NumClear for that clearing to, to, to be done. The taking out of, of, of uh, funds from one account, putting in another account and all that. And then obviously now the settlement of that, of those funds should now then be done into your account. Okay, so the bank at the end of the day has to do all that and for that they need that merchant account. For you to be able to submit that file with all the people that owe you money from your e-commerce from, from, from e transactions and then uh, process it for you to get your money from those different accounts because you can't do it yourself. Okay, most of the banks have a, me a merchant vetting criteria. So if you come to them and you say, okay, I want, I want e-commerce capability, I want to, to sell my, 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 my my goods and services online, they'll give you, a, they have a merchant vetting criteria where there are boxes that you need to tick off, okay? From a, obviously from a security perspective, uh, they look at operational risk, uh, they do a risk assessment on, on your, on your e-commerce model to make sure that it's, uh, it's safe. They, most of them have mandated 3D security. It's not per se a requirement from the Bank of Namibia, but since the banks want to be safe and it's best practice, they will take 3D security. They will not allow you into their into their ecosystem if you are not 3D secure. Okay? They basically provide that uh, link between you, the e-merchant, and the client, depending now on which step, on which uh, site you see, it can also be between the service provider. So you as an innovator can can decide to be either the, the, the e-commerce merchant or the service provider. Okay, to the e-commerce merchant. So all those uh, opportunities exist. And then like, like what I was saying, the clearing and settlement services, that's what they, that's what they basically give uh, the e-commerce merchant. <coughs> then we have now the e-commerce service providers. Now, for you to be an e-commerce service provider, you need to be licensed by the Payment Association of Namibia. Okay, now that's PEN, it's not Bank of Namibia. So it's, it's, it's another uh, uh, self-standing body called PEN. They license service providers. Now, like what I say, the service provider is that is that entity that allows uh, the e-commerce merchant to have a, a connection to the commercial bank. Okay, so it provides those the switching services, uh, the routing of of the transaction. So when your client goes on your website and swipe uh, or well and do a card present transaction that e-commerce service provider ensures that they, a link is established between your website and <coughs> obviously uh, if there's a in your system that that then talks to um, to the commercial bank most of the time um, I'll give an example like uh, there, there are there, there are some websites um, I don't know now which one I can give, but there are some websites whereby when you when you go to the checkout page, okay, obviously it's written HTTP there, but then when you go to the checkout page, then yes. then it goes to HTTPS, mm. then that means now you have probably entered a secure uh, space, and normally those secure spaces are provided by the <laughs> service provider, so normally merchants do not take on the the role of the service provider they. They uh, um, go to some licensed service providers, the license by pen, and then they provide that 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 secure uh, checkout page for them. Because, but then you won't see that now you've entered into that space. The service provider is normally just at the back, facilitating the whole transaction, and the service provider makes sure that that transaction is secured. No, mo most of the service providers are three D secure; they are PCI business compliant. Because if they are not, then they won't be able to talk to the banks. Okay. 
So they offer online payment capabilities. Um, they facilitate the buying and selling through e-commerce online transactions. They are normally suitable for small e-commerce merchants. Now, what, what this means is that you, as a merchant, have the, the have have the um, you can decide to, to approach the bank yourself just to say I want to be a service provider and my, I want to be my, my own merchant and my own service provider. You can do that. But then it's not really advisable because of the cost involved in that. Because the banks charge you per transaction. Now, we know if you are small, you are starting up, the volumes are probably not that, that, that high. So you will feel the cost. Now, what happens is uh, service providers that, that are licensed by PEN normally give you uh, a cheaper option. Okay? Unless you yourself get licensed by PEN and then you'll be the cheaper option. But... Uh, they normally are there for small merchants to create that link if you want uh, e-commerce capability. And they can base their charges on, on volumes or a standard fee, which is now the, the um, SLA um, once-off fee that they probably charge you. But they can also base it on volumes, but I doubt it would be as expensive as it is with a commercial bank. So they also then give you the acquiring services. So, uh, basically what we mean by this, uh, when you, is what I already explained, so when you use your card online, they, they uh, facilitate that, that acquiring of, uh, of the transaction for you, between your website and, between the e-commerce website and the commercial bank. <coughs> okay, then we come to the, real, to, to the role of, of the Bank of Namibia. Obviously, the Bank of Namibia as a whole, we have... Uh, roles, we have, we have functions, we have responsibilities, and I've only picked out three, there's quite a lot, but the three are basically the ones that mostly talk to uh, what we do in the space that we operate in. Okay, so we are there to promote and maintain a sound financial system, we are there to promote and maintain uh, an efficient payment mechanism, and we are there to foster, financial, to, to foster conducive financial uh, conditions, and from that, it, we have we have been tasked with the mandate of licensing payment instruments um, and endorsing PEN's decision <coughs> for uh, licensing service providers. I'll, I'll also get to that. Okay. Then we have the role of the payment and settlement systems department. So basically, we have a principal act, the Payment System Management Act of 2003, which was amended in 2010. Uh, it gives us uh, the right to regulate and oversee the national payment system. So anything that and with anything that's that's contained therein, which is your commercial banks, your your um, your, your non-bank financial institutions like your NAMIX, um, uh, what MobiPay, NAMPO, regulations that broadly talk to um, the licensing of payment instruments. So we have PSD one, the determination on the issuance of payment instruments. So this determination um, outlines what one needs to satisfy from a, a, a legal perspective when you want to issue payment instruments. Okay, so there are conditions in there, and then we also have determination on the issues of, of, of e-money. So when you want to issue uh, a payment instrument that facilitates e-money, okay. So basically, e-money is when you come up with a payment instrument that stores value. Okay, you take someone's money and you give them back. A stored value facility, then you are giving it e-money, like what Mr. Nobel is trying to do. So that type of uh, of, of instrument is there is Nobel. Peter, Peter, Peter. Oh, sorry, Peter. Peter. I don't know if we Nobel. All right, Peter. So that type of payment instrument is now then licensed <coughs> under uh, PSD three. Okay. So for you to uh, do something like what you just presented to us right now. It has to be licensed by us. You have to uh, get in touch with us so we can give you the full uh, requirements of what you need. So basically, what you really need, um, if I have to talk about the requirements broadly, so, okay, so basically you need to be a company, obviously, uh, a registered company with the Ministry of Trade. Uh, so, but for the license, then what you need is you need uh, to show to us 
that you are capable of uh, issuing such a payment instrument, okay? You need, one of the requirements in, 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 in the human determination is that you need to have a pool account for the safe storage of the funds that you are pooling and the sort of relief facility that you are giving back. So like in his case, where um, you can create, you, you, create you, you create a wallet on your phone, but then the, the physical money should be stored somewhere. And it shouldn't, shouldn't be stored in his bank account, it should be stored in a trust account with a commercial bank. Okay? Mm -hmm. So and, and at any moment, what the dimension is saying is that at any moment, the liabilities of the, of the public that you have on your wallets should at least be 100% uh, represented in the pool account. So what we do is, at every, every, every end of the month, we get returns from the e-money issuers like your mobile pays, your, your, of the amount that they currently, uh, um, that's currently outstanding on the liabilities that they have on people's, on the cards that they give people. So that's one of them. Um, what else do you need? You, you need uh, to be, you need to have uh, risk management frameworks, you need to, um, you need risk management frameworks, you need its security standards as well, you need to be secure. We look at so many things, uh, but they are all in the PSD3. Uh, we can also talk offline if you want a copy of that, or if you want more clarity on, on what you basically need when you want to set up a, um, or you want to issue a payment instrument. Okay, and then we have the role, sorry, did I finish everything? Yeah, so basically that's it. And then you have uh, PEN, the Payment Association of Namibia. This is the payment system management body. It was created from our act, from the Payment System Management Act, uh, to assist the bank uh, in setting standards uh, for the members of the national payment system in uh, licensing service providers. So we have numerous service providers. They are all listed on the Payment Association of Namibia's uh, uh, website. One of them is VCS. VCS is a service provider that that that, that provides e-commerce capability. So one can also talk to them if you want to uh, if you want that service provider to be the link between you and the commercial bank. Uh, then we have the national payment solution as well. It's also a service provider that offers e-commerce capability. And for you to be a service provider, PEN has what they call a PEN and uh, entry and participation criteria where they list the criteria uh, that one needs to fulfill when you want to be licensed as a service provider. Okay? Just a background on PEN is a system management body. It was established under Section 3 of the Payment System Management Act. Uh, under Section 3, it also outlines the responsibilities of PEN. Uh, it was established in 2005 and the Chief Operating Officer of uh, Pen is Ms. Ahmed Rathenam. So she is the sort of the CEO of Pen. It's just a naming COO, CEO, CEO is the same name for Pen. Okay. So this is what normally happens um, if now you want to provide e commerce uh, capability or, or, involved in the, or, or be involved in the e commerce space. So you can either do it uh, as a payment instrument issuer and then work your way into that e-commerce leg, or you can participate in the e-commerce uh, space as a service provider. Now, for the life, for, 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 for issuing a payment instrument, you have to come to the Bank of Namibia. For a service provider, you have to go to PEN, okay? Now, the difference between the two, the, 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 the other one is mostly in, involved in the issuance of a payment instrument, okay? Be it, be it a card, uh, be it a wallet, uh, be it uh, selling things online and create, like let's say creating a wallet online, uh, something like paper. So that's basically that, that leg. This is more about the underlying, the, the underlying technology. If you want to provide that, that technology that allows payment instrument issuers to operate uh, or to talk to the commercial banks, then you probably need to license as a service provider. J just a note that PEN doesn't only license e-commerce service providers, they license any type of service providers. 
Okay, so when we talk about paid uh, service providers, you have service providers like uh, facilitators, collectors, all those are service providers where, let's say maybe you go to a Foshini and tell Foshini, okay, you have so many <laughs> clients that, uh, that pay you per month, okay? Let me facilitate that for you. Let me collect those payments and then at the end of the month, uh, give you a, 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 a batch of payments so you don't have to when you when when a client comes in the you, you, you don't have to administer all those uh, one 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 by one uh, payments anymore I do everything for you and then I just submit uh, everything to the commercial bank and then you just get one figure in your account then you cut out all those uh, debit orders and, and all that so uh, normally people that go into this uh, uh, space target that debit order systems where companies have so many debit orders that they need to facilitate or administer so a, a service provider normally does that and you have so many service providers like ATM solution is also one of them um, the, bank, uh, the, the, the guys that, that offer these mini ATMs around them that you see you have those guys so they do so many things so they are normally licensed by PEN and then when PEN licenses a service provider the final decision lies with, the, with us. So when PEN does an assessment on the service provider, then Bank of has to designate. Uh, sorry, not designate. This is supposed to be uh, endorsed. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, this is supposed to be endorsed. So we endorse PEN's decision when they uh, approve or decline a service provider's application. Okay? So we, we, we look at what, what PEN has done and then if we are okay with it, then we say, Pen, okay, you can go ahead uh, approving that, that, that service provider. So that, that's what it basically uh, means. <coughs> okay, so basically the way forward is just a way of uh, encouragement. Um, I think one of, the, one of the lines that was in the invite was, they are seeing so many uh, innovations out there in the neighboring countries, you know things like Mpesa out there, and the idea is probably to try and replicate and bring those things in here if they fit, where you, where you see a market for it. So we encourage research, be it a local, see what's happening, there's so much happening in the payment space in Namibia. Uh, guys like Mr. Bitten always come to the Bank of Namibia with their ideas and, 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 and suggestions and they want clarity and all that. You can drop us an email if you have questions. Regionally, um, look at what you guys in Mpesa are doing. There are African websites that, that talk to uh, payments all the time. There's a website called Payments Africa, I think, as well. Look at all those guys and see what they are doing, if you can replicate it in here as well. Internationally as well, you have your Apple Pays. I'm sure some of those innovations that, that uh, are roaming around also came from those type of guys. Um, look at the regulations, um, engage the Bank of Namibia, engage experts, engage PEN, uh, engage the industry participants, see the commercial, commercial banks, because most of what you are, most of the things that you are trying to innovate, believe me, the, most of the time there will be a bank involved. You, you cannot issue a payment instrument if, if there's no commercial bank behind that. Uh, where the wallet of the funds that you are collecting is, uh, is stored. And last but not least, some opt for a cashless society where you say make cash your competitor. So try and come up with uh, in, in innovation that makes us uh, cashless um, and also obviously drive financial inclusion. Uh, look at probably innovations that are target specific some countries have done that uh, in, in kenya where they have a card just for the farmers so when when farmers want to do uh, we want, when they want to sell their their products they don't have to drive all the way to the market anymore they post everything it's, it's, it was a us it's a ussd enabled service post everything on the ussd i have 50 tomatoes 60 grapes and whatnot then you find the buyer on, on, on stuff like that uh, there, will be, there will also talks about trying to get in, in innovations that are also targeting women. 
Um, so, yeah, I think it's a very interesting space to play in, and we basically um, <coughs> embrace any innovation. And with that, I think I come to the end of my presentation. I think there's a panel discussion, uh, but I don't know if there are questions before that, uh, before the panel discussion. Any questions? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It's rather interesting. <coughs> I was not aware that there were so many hurdles to deter us from it. Uh, but I understand why we need regulations. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to find out, from my perspective, if I just want to sell stuff on eBay, let's say I have excess artifacts. I'm an artist, for instance, just trying to sell my wooden carvings. And I'd like to put those on, on, uh, on, on Amazon, on eBay, and I don't want to have an e-commerce site myself. What regulations actually speak to me then in that case? Do I still need that merchant account and jump through PAN and the others, or? Is there any fee attached to the e-commerce license? E like you don't need to pay something. Um, I have one question. Um, I'm actually a developer, and I think the question that I will ask will speak to most of us here. We develop applications, and so we we'll love to sell some of these applications um, to on the international market, such as on um, Google Play and also on, apps, on Apple Store. Mm -hmm. But the biggest challenge that we get is that we can't receive money. And um, is the, are you guys a Bank of Namibia perhaps doing something regarding that so that uh, Namibian developers or Namibian uh, sellers should, can also receive money internationally? But we can use our cards to pay, but I can use my Namibian card to actually receive money and payment uh, through a post or Google. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have another question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is uh, cryptocurrency also seen as a, as a, a legal innovation <laughs> by uh, the Bank of Namibia, <laughs> or is it seen as a force against uh, the regulations in the country? Next. Four questions. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> So basically, your question talks to basically customer to customer e-commerce. Um, in that case, probably depending on how you do it, but I don't, I don't think uh, we necessarily regulate that. Okay, because you are selling. It, it, it probably depends how you are doing it, but then if it if it if it involves you. Um, Right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, brother. Cust cust customer to customer. Like if you go on eBay and let's say you sell your your your, your paintings online uh, internationally, do we regulate that? It's probably just a, me a matter of exchange control and, and all that. Um, I think there were his question and his question probably more or less related. Yes. So. Um, <coughs> And as much as we are not so much regulating that space, there are certain exchange control rules that apply. And currently, um, we are looking at that. For example, if you if you buy and sell things through pay, using PayPal, for example, and as much as you can buy um, and therefore pay, when you sell, for example, your paintings, you cannot necessarily receive that, uh, that money. So there are currently processes that are uh, in the making in order to ensure that Namibians can have that capability to, for example, use a PayPal uh, to receive their funds. Uh, but there are certain exchange, uh, exchange control uh, regulations in place uh, that needs to be followed. Um, and of course, there need to be some form of banking system also behind that. Uh, 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 um, service providers such as PayPal, for example, they are they are licensed elsewhere in the world. So we just want to ensure also that um, our Namibian, um, the customer base is appropriately
protected uh, in the event of anything happening. So uh, we just want to ensure that certain processes are happening. So there are currently work that is being done to ensure such capability for Namibians to also receive um, foreign, uh, you know, foreign currency, so to speak, into their accounts through the pay when they sell their ways. Because we have that complaint mostly from artists and, and whatnot who cannot really do that, um, those type of transactions in order to receive. So, so for now, the, yes, the answer is you can still not receive. Um, uh, you can still not receive uh, money uh, through the normal channels when you sell uh, online through uh, eBay or um, using the PayPal channels and so on and so forth. So the money just is on the PayPal account. Okay. But you, but you still can't use that on Google Play or App Store. No, no, you can actually link it to your paper for those. I was fortunate enough to have lived someone else, so I then registered for merchant account on PayPal. And then the good thing is, you don't close it down, you just change yeah. the card. So you change the card to the internet card, and then you just change this over. And I haven't sold or received any money yet, because I wanted to make sure I'm not breaking laws in terms of paying taxes. <laughs> Uh, and that, so like uh, in case of um, buying online, I remember uh, I've been sp for five years buying online from AliExpress especially, yeah. Yet every transaction I did, especially when I buy it, I bought maybe something like 200,000 or a lot of things. And uh, with something that I don't like, then you cancel. Of course, your payment will come back, but with charges especially through the bank. When you see, I remember last week I did one payment. The good is, once you cancel the order, then the items, maybe you say you don't want anymore. You look share with the seller, I don't want anymore. Then, uh, let's say for last week I bought something 3,500. And then when, uh, when the transaction come back, 60, $68 charge, just because the bank, the money went and then came back because I canceled, then it's, over three thousand five hundred sixty-eight uh, has gone. So, but money came back. But it took two weeks for the money to come back. To just like hold on hold for until the bank. When you go to the bank, they just say this. They cannot do anything with the money. They will just say that money is still somewhere. <coughs> then once it's come back, it has a lot of charges. So even now, I don't know. It's our taxi, or I don't know. It's you get money and then tell us. In currency, whatever US, it will the charges will be like very, very high. I'm telling you, that's why now it's very difficult to really to do that business. Especially. So, I'm going to be working here. I'm answering um, ask you a question about the fees attached to the e So, I'm not sure about the pen uh, service provider fee, the application fee. I think it's 10,000, I'm not sure. Hmm? Uh, 5,000.
I think it's between 5,000 and 10,000, if I'm not mistaken. So, so but, uh, uh, do, but, I, but I speak under Croatian there. So do in, uh, uh, engage pen to just get all the relevant information and the correct information in that regard. So on the screen, I have pens and pens for what we need to do first. So in another one on the website, you can, you, you can pop them an email or you can uh, contact that number uh, to get more details on the fees uh, involved. Yeah. Isn't it from both sides, from Pen side and from Bank of Namibia yes. side that you need to get up? Yes, so even, even Bank of Namibia, we, we also have charges uh, for, for, for an application. I think the, the payment instrument is 5,000. Um, yeah, before the transaction can be processed and uh, the application can be processed and, and approved. Mm -hmm. Fees. So once you're issued with a license, you have to renew it on an annual basis, and then there's also a fee attached to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cryptocurrency. Before I take more questions. Hmm. Uh, okay, so cryptocurrency. Uh, the bank is in the bank is in the process um, of establishing a position or giving this position. Uh, with regards to, to, to cryptocurrency, um, currently under the, the regulations that we have, we do not deem pay, uh, cryptocurrency as a payment instrument um, as, as what we have in our regulations. Um, and people that are engaging in cryptocurrency currently are doing so at their own risk. But just be mindful of the risks that are involved in dealing with cryptocurrency. Obviously, there are risks, there are also benefits. It's a highly volatile um, space to play in. You know how the price goes. One day is uh, one thousand uh, one years. Uh, what one thousand US dollars for one Bitcoin? The next day it's two hundred and fifty. So it's very volatile. But we don't per se uh, consider it to be legal tender in Namibia. The same as what you have as your your tender. We don't see it as the same. <laughs> So I can't, I can't buy bitcoins. But okay, so what we mean by legal tender is, you, you know, the Namibian dollar is a legal tender. Okay? The Bank of Namibia, I think under under Section Seventeen, says what legal tender is. Mm. So it's it's the notes and the coins that are the Bank of Namibia. That's legal tender. Yes. So we do not view Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in the same way as we view uh, the, Namib the Namibian dollar, per se. So it will, we, uh, but then probably the two of you can probably, um, just like at time, like you can buy this laptop. You say, okay, give me your laptop, I'll give you $10,000 at time. You know, yeah. those are you. But us as a bank, we do not see cryptocurrency as a legal tender in Namibia. We, we don't do this a currency. Yeah. So, so no. I want to take. Uh, <laughs> 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 and um, actually, I just wanted to know. Let's say um, those people who engage themselves into illegal uh, stuff, mm -hmm. and then they have uh, their properties have to be seized or frozen uh, and what. So that means if I have my five million uh, in the form of uh, Bitcoin. So I will roll free. Yeah. It's like you are not going to freeze my account. Is that what you want? But then it was now without regulation. Yeah, okay, so we we, we we are currently working on um Okay, so basically we are studying this thing. Okay. It's not really we, we, we don't really know the entire uh Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and all that. So we are busy working on that but to answer your question, so that 5,000 Bitcoins will be in probably an exchange. Uh, it will be on the distributed ledger, it will, mm. you, and because Namibia currently does not have exchanges, okay? And you, you probably cannot set up an exchange in Namibia currently, because the regulation is not there for you set up a Bitcoin exchange in Namibia. But I can, so, I can still mine and sell them. Yeah, mining, mining, mining anyone can do. Mining anyone can do, you, you, you can so, sell them, but setting up an exchange here, you probably have to engage, you probably have to come engage the Bank of Namibia. 
Okay, but I just uh, I just exchange my bitcoins then in US dollars, and then I get my US dollars or my euros because there are banks internationally that accept bitcoins. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so that's, that's fine. So, uh, no, no, I have a question. Can you answer the question? If it's if it's um, if any Uh, you won't be falling uh, under the corporate regulations because you're, which falls under our financial intelligence center under the uh, financial um, intelligence act. So, and they have very wide powers. And some of the some of the states <coughs> even reach to some of the.